वेलकम यू ऑल टू बी टी यू शिक्षणा प्रोग्राम टुडे आई विल बी डीलिंग विथ मॉड्यूल वन एंड लेक्चर वन ऑफ एटीन ई सी सिक्सटी थ्री माइक्रोवेव्स एंड एंटना कोर्स ओके सो माई नेम इज डॉक्टर श्री लक्ष्मी आई एम फ्रॉम आर वी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एज यू ऑल नो फ्रॉम योर सिलेबस कंटेंट दैट माइक्रोवेव्स एंड एंटना मॉड्यूल वन हैज टू पोर्शंस वन इज माइक्रोवेव ट्यूब्स अदर वन इज माइक्रोवेव ट्रांसमिशन लाइन्स ओके so let us start with microwave tubes and as part of the introduction let us go go on to see what are vacuum tubes because as a, a course you would not have studied vacuum tubes anywhere in your uh, curriculum okay in fact vacuum tube devices as part of uh, electronic uh, uh, signal generators and oscillators have been obsolete okay vacuum tubes are only prevalent in the microwave domain because of their very important characteristic that they are able to give very high power signals fine so let us look at what are vacuum tubes and then what is their relevance in the microwave domain and as a sample vacuum tube you have reflex klystron oscillator to study fine so let us start with what a vacuum tube is and the content of this presentation is taken from the microwave engineering by anapurna das and sisir das the textbook one as per your curriculum fine let us move on so the objectives of this study are to find out why the conventional vacuum tubes which were being used at low frequencies are not suitable as they are at the microwave range okay we need to do some modifications in their construction and because of which because of the high frequency their working also differs when compared to the low frequency working of the same tubes fine so why the conventional tubes are not suitable at high frequencies that we have to see and then we have to see a new concept which is called as velocity modulation of electrons okay all of you know about the term modulation modulation means we have to change the carrier frequency or amplitude or phase with respect to the message signal attributes isn't it that is what we know about modulation let us now look at a new term which is called as velocity modulation that too for electrons which are in movement fine so now let us start with the first topic that is vacuum tubes see vacuum tubes as the name itself say they are a glass tube which house or which envelop a structure called the electronic gun structure gun okay so what are the constituents of this electronic gun see the electron gun has a indirectly heated cathode and an anode and one or two grids okay these grids are again electrodes which are in the form of meshes that means they have holes in between their grid wires fine and then all these are enclosed in a evacuated glass tube and the cathode is always powered with a negative signal dc and anode is given a positive signal dc grid depending on the functioning of the electrode will have either positive or a small negative signal fine so these vacuum tubes were the first tubes which were used for electronic signal generation amplification and then oscillations etc okay so because they are now obsolete you are not studying them as a course okay otherwise these vacuum tubes were a part of the analog microelectronic course now we straight away start with semiconductor pn junction diode and also semiconductor bjt as a structure fine so i am going to show you an analogy means a similarity of the vacuum tubes on a very surface level with those pn junction diode and then npn transistor fine so the first one even in the vacuum tubes we have a diode you know all know that a diode means it's a two terminal device it will have a cathode and an anode uh, 
n type layer and a p type layer which is analogous to the semiconductor pn diode okay so this diode was forming or was performing the same switching action same working as a limiter as a clamper as a rectifier as a multiplier etc etc what you have studied for the pn junction diode okay only thing is it was a vacuum tube structure far bigger than the small pn diode what you see nowadays okay then we have triode okay this is a three terminal device tri means three three terminal device analogous to our bipolar junction transistor in a transistor you all know we have base we have collector and an emitter isn't it so in the triode also we had the analogous three electrodes a grid which was performing the function of a base then the anode which was performing the function of the collector and the cathode which performs the function of the emitter right so this triode is what we are going to consider now for our study okay as and we take this as a conventional three terminal vacuum tube diode which was performing the function of a bjt what is the main function of a bjt switching and also it performs amplification and also it oscillates to produce the signal isn't it so these three functionalities were also done by the triode before the invention of the bjt okay these vacuum tubes were discarded slowly when the semiconductor devices were invented why because they were consuming a lot of power and they were very big and they were generating lot of heat okay because of all these disadvantages they were discarded at the low frequency applications but then because of their capability to produce very high power signals microwave devices are still in the vacuum tube domain some of them okay so now you know that a triode has three electrodes okay and it is in the form of a circle if you take the cross section with the bottom having a uh, cathode then closer to the cathode you have a grid and on the top you have a an anode okay so now the g here the subscript indicates grid k indicates the cathode and also you have c indicates the capacitance and z indicates the impedance okay so you know that impedance is inversely proportional to capacitance isn't it and also as the capacitance value increases the impedance value reduces okay so this is the point which you have to remember in order to see why the conventional diodes or triodes are not suitable at high frequencies okay just remember impedance is inversely proportional to capacitance and capacitance increase will lead to impedance reduction and since the impedance reduces the there is loss of signal to the ground or wherever the other end is connected you all know that the electronic signal always follows the least impedance path okay so these capacitances come in parallel to external loads and they affect their resonance also just remember this point we'll see in the next diagram what are these parameters okay so now what are we going to do see now we are going to see what is the effect of high frequency on these vacuum tubes in particular the triode okay so now look at the structure this is the structure of a triode what i was just discussing okay so it is having a cathode a grid and an anode okay and i have shown in dotted lines three capacitances i'll tell you why dotted lines and what are these capacitances okay so the dotted lines indicate that these capacitances are not actually connected physically in this circuit okay physically we have capacitances here in the input in the bias and in the output okay with which are connected using solid lines they are the actual components which are there but these dotted line capacitors are coming up 
when once the circuit is powered with a high frequency signal. Okay. So what are these capacitances? How do they come up? How do they manifest themselves when there is no actual physical capacitance that is connected? See, this cathode is a plate or a metal plate which is connected to a charge and this grid is also connected to a bias and these two are separated by vacuum. Okay. So, do they not form a parallel plate capacitor? Yes, isn't it? See, whenever there is there are two charged plates separated by a small distance and there is either a dielectric or air or vacuum present, it definitely forms a capacitor. At low frequencies, this capacitance value is very insignificant. Okay, you may ask me, ma'am, uh, when we uh, power this at low frequency, even then the capacitance comes up. Definitely it will come up. But the value of the capacitance is very insignificant. Okay. So, when the high frequency is given, this capacitance value becomes significant. So, when this capacitance value becomes significant, just now in the previous slide I told you, the impedance is going to become very low. So, look at this. From the input, this capacitance is coming in parallel to the ground. So, what will happen? The input signal instead of going into the triode is going to be bypassed to the ground through the capacitance CGK. So, now what will be the effective input signal that is reaching this triode? It is lesser than what it was supposed to reach, isn't it? So, now this is an amplifier circuit what is connected. So, if the input signal itself is low, then what is the output signal that you can expect in spite of amplification? the value of output signal will be very low, isn't it? This is the reason why the capacitance CGK is dangerous and it is going to pull down the efficiency and output of the triode at high frequencies. Similarly, you have other capacitances which is CPG and then CPK, okay? So, here this is grid, CP is the parallel capacitance grid and this is the cathode capacitance. So, all these are connected in a way to the ground and then they are going to short circuit the signal to the ground. Okay. So, now when this comes up, the performance of the tube definitely reduces. So, now what is this called as? These capacitances which come up at high frequencies are called as inter-electrode capacitance. You know inter means between. Okay, intra means within. There is a difference. INTER is between two plates. INTRA is within the plate. Okay, this is between plates. So, it is inter electrode between two electrodes and there is a capacitance. So, there is the effect of inter electrode capacitance at high frequencies. Similarly, there is lead inductance. Okay, lead is nothing but this wire which is connected to the cathode to the ground and which is connecting the grid to the circuit which is connecting the anode to the circuit. These are called as leads. Okay, At high frequencies, these leads will have their self-inductance value increased by a large amount. You know, the impedance which is due to the inductance is directly proportional to the value of L, the inductance. Okay, Unlike C, Z is inversely proportional to C, but Z is inverse directly proportional to L value. When once the inductance increases, because it is in series with the circuit to the output, it will consume all the value of the voltage that drops here only and no voltage comes at the output. Okay, So, these two effects, the inter-electrode capacitance and the lead inductance are going to bring down the value of the output for any triode or any vacuum tube at high frequencies. This is why the vacuum tubes as it is cannot be used at high frequencies. Okay. So, there is a third effect which is called as transit time effect. Okay. Okay. So, lead inductance this provides a degenerative feedback of output signal to the input reducing overall efficiency of the tube. What is a degenerative term? Degenerative means it's a destructive feedback. Okay. So then comes the transit time. What is transit time? 
what do you mean by transit transit means moving from one place to the other okay who are moving here it is the electrons which are moving from the cathode towards the anode within the vacuum tube space okay so the time taken by the electron to move from cathode to anode is called as transit time okay so before this i wish to tell you that in the functioning of the device when the cathode is indirectly heated by a filament the cathode is made of a material which is going to release lot of electrons due to the heat into the space transit space okay so these electrons are pulled by the grid which is of a very small positive potential because the grid is having a mesh structure through the holes of the mesh these electrons are going to be accelerated towards the highly positive anode which is going to pull them and then put them in the external circuit as current okay this is how the tube functions okay so the transit time of these electrons that is the time taken by the electron from its generation at the cathode end to its collection at the anode end the transit time is dependent on the frequency of operation of the tube okay you know that f is equal to 1 by t the time period as frequency increases what happens to the time period it is going to reduce okay so the time available for the electron to travel from cathode to anode goes on reducing at some point of time the electron when the frequency is very high the time is so short that the electron as soon as it is emitted from the cathode will not get time to get absorbed by the anode it still stays in the cathode space itself uh, oscillating between the cathode and the anode because of the positive and negative charges okay negative charges repel the electrons positive charges they pull the electrons towards themselves because by the time the electron tries to go near the anode because of the high frequency the polarity of the signal would have changed okay we are going to impose a high frequency bias on the dc bias so then the electron is pulled back towards the cathode again again by the time it comes to the cathode the polarity changes to positive or negative on the cathode so it goes back so this fluctuation will lead to effective phase shift between the grid voltage and the plate current so you all know that grid voltage is the input voltage that is the base voltage and plate current is the anode current which is the collector current in terms of a bjt you know that for an amplifier bjt the output signal and input signal are to be exactly 180 degree out of phase otherwise it will not function as an amplifier so it is the same thing here also because of the phase shift created between this the 180 degree phase shift gets spoiled okay because of this the functioning of the device will also be not correct okay so now these are the three things which are going to spoil the functioning of the diode or triode at microwave frequencies okay so now i said microwave uh, domain needs vacuum tubes because they are able to give us very high powers but then conventional tubes cannot be straight away used then what is the solution okay there must be some solution isn't it let us see what is the solution so increase the tube length because if you take capacitance is equal to epsilon a by d is it not see because capacitance is increasing z is decreasing we said and then it is short circuiting the current so let us try to reduce the capacitance if you have to reduce the capacitance you know parallel plate capacitance equation c equal to epsilon a by d so keeping all other things constant if you increase d c is going to come down because c is inversely proportional to d the distance between the plates so if you have to increase d the tube has to be lengthened so that you put more space between the cathode anode and also grid and then l is directly proportional to the d so but transit time again increases okay 
So this is a contradicting structure. We want to also solve transit time issues at the same time solving the inter-electrode capacitance and lead inductance issues. One solution is to increase the tube length which is going to not give us complete solution. So suppose you reduce the size of the tube then its power handling capability will come down. We also want high power because of which only we are uh, keeping vacuum tubes at high frequencies. Okay. So now what was the solution that was thought of and how did the new microwave tubes come up is what we are going to see next. Okay. In the next next lectures when we take up reflex glystron. So now the summary of this first part of this lecture is that there is three important effects. One is inter-electrode capacitance, other one is lead inductance and third one is transit time effect. Because of this, the vacuum tubes cannot function at high frequencies. Okay. So now, other important part of this lecture is velocity of modulation of electrons. Okay. Let us see what it is. Fine. So before I come to this explanation, I want to show you this structure. Okay. See, this is called a re-entrant cavity. Okay. So you all know that just now I told you that in a vacuum triode, we use grid in the form of base, in the place of base. And the grid has pores, micro pores. It's a mesh structure. Okay. In place of grid, we use a re-entrant cavity. Okay. So, in the modified structure of the vacuum tube, which is going to function at microwave frequencies. Okay. Before I take up the microwave tube itself, I want to tell you the functioning of this re-entrant cavity. Okay. Look at the name. It is re-entrant cavity. Something is entering and then again re-entering. Okay. What is that which is entering and what is that which is re-entering? See, this cavity which is in the form of the C structure or it will be in the form of a dumbbell structure. Okay. So, if you look at the textbook, you also see various forms of the re-entrant cavities. One for such form is this one. So, you see here, one wall of this cavity is all made of a mesh. It's a dotted line. It's not a solid structure. It's not a plate. It's a mesh. And the opposite wall is also a mesh. There is a gap between these two, which is filled with air. And the other walls of the cavity is all solid. And this cavity is the grid cavity, which is going to be powered with a small positive voltage or negative voltage, depending on the tube. Okay. Now you know what is the construction of a re-entrant cavity. It should have one wall as a perforated wall. The other walls as solid walls and there should be a gap in between the two opposite walls. Okay. Which is in the path of the electron movement. Okay. This grid structure is going to be placed in the path of the electron movement in the tube. Okay. So now the electrons travel from one end to the other end. This side, left side, there will be the cathode which is going to release the electrons and right side you have a anode which is highly positive which is there to collect the electrons. So the electrons have to move through the perforation of the grids and they have to get collected by the anode. Okay, in the function in the, of the cavity or the tube. Now, this cavity will have a small noise which is alternating in nature. This will be biased actually with a battery of positive or negative charge which is a DC. But because of the high frequency and because it is a resonant cavity, it will have some small value of alternating signal which is a noise signal. Okay. So this noise signal is getting superimposed on the DC bias of this cavity. So what will be the effective electric field within this structure, it will be of a alternating nature. Fine. Now, let us say, take the simple example of a sine wave 
alternating signal this is easy to understand so you have a sine wave signal okay when the electron is entering this it enters with some average constant voltage sorry velocity okay because the velocity of the electrons are dependent on the charge on on the cathode on which it is released okay so it is going to be coming with some acceleration or velocity when once it enters the cavity let us assume at that instant the alternating signal is just crossing the zero okay you know a sine wave will go to maximum peak cross zero and come to minimum peak and this process repeats right so when this reference electron is coming let us assume the instantaneous voltage or the electric field in this cavity gap is zero okay so then it will not get affected it is as if it is just a path and this electron is going to go with the same velocity with which it entered did you understand so that is why we call it as a reference electron next let us assume another electron which is coming at a later stage okay a few seconds later than this reference electron when it is coming the field is going positive because of the positive going field the entered electron will be accelerated it is speeded up so it is going to go faster out of the grid space compared to the reference electron speed okay then it will move and take up another electron which was released before this electron the reference electron let us assume the field was going negative in that period then what happens it will be retarded so this process goes on affecting the speed of electrons which are entering the grid space okay what is happening now because of the alternating field that is present in the grid space the velocity of the electrons are changing to either higher value lower value or some of them they pass without any change see this change in velocity because of the alternating field that is present in the grid space or in this reentrant cavity space is called as velocity modulation did you understand in this context the word modulation means just change that's all okay modulation doesn't mean anything here it means change in velocity velocity modulation is change in velocity of the electrons why is the change coming up the change is coming up because of the alternating field that is present in the cavity gap why is that alternating field present it is due to a small rf voltage that is generated due to the noise in the cavity that gets superimposed on the dc signal which is the bias signal of the cavity and then it creates the alternating field so because of this the velocity of the electrons gets modulated now what if the velocity gets modulated what is the effect on the current or the working of the tube see i told you some electrons are going without change in speed some electrons are going with high acceleration some electrons are coming with deceleration that is reduction in speed and they are all generated and they are all entering the cavity at different points of time okay so don't you think that some of these electrons have a chance to meet each other at some point in this gap isn't it because of their change in velocity some of them meet and they form a electron bunch this is very important because of the velocity modulation itself there is bunching of electrons happening okay remember so much after bunching what happens is what we are going to see in the next lecture on the reflex klystron oscillator okay so and why it is called reentrant cavity see i told you this cavity is biased by a small positive bias if there are some electrons which try to scatter out of this space grid space 
the cavity walls are going to pull them back because of the shape. See here, it's a E shape. Electrons cannot scatter. If they scatter also, they are pulled back and they are sent back into the cavity itself. This is how it is going to prevent the loss in current. And because the end electrons can re-enter, it is called as a re-entrant cavity. That's it. So now, use of re-entrant cavity with grids is the main reason for velocity modulation of electrons. And this velocity modulation is going to cause density modulation of electrons or bunching of electrons. You know density means the number of electrons present in a unit space. Okay. They are going to increase and they form a bunch. Okay. So this much you remember in this. So finally to summarize in this lecture what all the things that we have studied. We started with what is a vacuum tube. Okay. We just saw a vacuum diode and a vacuum triode on a just a definition level and we saw the analogy between vacuum triode and a 3 terminal BJT. Then we saw the three effects inter electrode capacitance, lead inductance and transit time effect which is coming up at microwave frequencies and which is what is going to limit the performance of the vacuum tube at microwave frequencies. In the second part of the lecture, we defined and saw a specimen re-entrant cavity and then we saw how a re-entrant cavity is going to cause velocity modulation of the electrons and then the effect of velocity modulation is bunching of electrons. Fine. I think we will stop lecture 1 here. And then we will continue with the use of this bunching in the next lecture.